YouTube, what's going on? Techie Mike, back with another video for you guys. Today, it's been about 24 hours, well not about, it's been over 24 hours since the Samsung Unpacked 2024 event happened in Paris where they announced the Z Fold 6, Z Flip 6, we got the Galaxy Ring, we got the Watch Ultra, the Watch 7, and we got a bunch of AI stuff as well. I'm not really going to touch too much on the AI stuff in this video. What I really wanted to talk about in this video is hardware. I want to talk about what was announced at the event, what caught my interest, what kind of underwhelmed me, but what I ultimately ended up buying because at the end of the day, got to get you guys the goods, right? So let's talk about it in this video. First up, obviously, we got the Z Fold 6 and the Z Flip 6. Now, I've never really been a flip person. I feel like for me personally, I'd rather just use one of these if I want a phone that's designed to be open like that but there are people out there who like the Z Flip apparently it's one of the more popular foldable form factors so the Z Flip 6 got some upgrades this year and improved hinge and I think there were some upgrades to the camera as well so for those of you that are interested in the Z Flip 6 drop a comment down below and let me know what do you think about the changes to it this year worth upgrading are you keeping your Z Flip 5 or if you're coming from an older one how do you feel about it with the Z Fold 6, however, Z Fold 6 really didn't get anything major except for three things that really stood out to me. Number one, a new frame. So it's titanium frame, it's a new body, more cornered off edges, so it's very reminiscent of the S24 Ultra. You also got a minor upgrade in the camera when it came to the ultra wide, and we also got one extra millimeter of width when it comes to the actual uh, screen size on the outside so the phone is a is slightly bigger it's also slightly thinner and it's slightly less heavier than last year's the predecessor of the Z Fold 5 now I ordered the Z Fold 6 for two reasons number one because the new form factor really stands out to me I don't know why but the new form factor was probably the most appealing thing it's still a thin candy bar foldable and I have a feeling that it's gonna not really be that big of a difference once I get it in hand as a compared to the Z Fold 5, I actually will compare the two of them in hand, so stay tuned for that video. But I actually liked the form factor. I think that people don't give enough credit to the fact that subtle changes in refinement can make a device different. Case in point, this phone here, this is my 15 Pro Max, this thing, the refinements year after year have been very, very subtle, almost to the point that you don't really notice them. But with this phone here, with the S24 Ultra, going to the flat display and the titanium frame and the overall just feel of the phone when it's in hand really just kind of changed it to where it stands out to me from an S23 or an S22. So I'm hoping that that same thing happens with the Z Fold 6. I'm hoping that I'll get that same feeling. Also, the navy color, come on now, if y'all can't tell, I'm a blue person. I love the color blue. So to see that they have a navy Z Fold, like, oh, that was like a no question. The next product that was announced that I thought was actually really interesting is the Galaxy Ring. Now, I've never been one of those people who cared about the smart rings. Smart rings never really appealed to me like that because I always felt like I have a smart watch. So what do I need a smart ring for, right? But seeing some of the things that this ring can do, it has me a little bit intrigued. Seven day battery life, the health metrics that you get from it. I'm curious to see how those metrics work when it comes to like sleep tracking, because one thing about sleep tracking, I like the idea of tracking my sleep and you know, things like that, but I hate wearing a watch to bed because I don't like to wear a watch. I'm one of those people who I'm breaking that bad habit of sleeping like this. So sometimes I'll wake up in the morning and I'll have like a big indent on my face from my watch and you know, it's just not comfortable. But I am curious to see how that works. The other big thing about the ring is the no subscription. I do know for a fact that there are several smart rings out there that you have to have a subscription to use. And the idea that Samsung is basically saying, you know what, hey, here's our smart ring. You don't need a subscription to use it. And it lasts for seven days on a charge. Like, I mean, it's game over for a lot of people. Like, if you don't think that this is gonna change the market, I. I don't think you're paying attention. I don't think you're paying attention. Smart rings are here and they are more popular than some people give them credit for. But I really do think that it's gonna be a game changer. And then we got the watch, right? We got the watch. Now, here's my thing with the watch. The watch seven looks like the watch six, which looks like the watch five, which looks like the watch four. So 
Okay. I have nothing to say about that. I mean, it's the same thing as the Apple Watch. I have nothing to say about those. It's nice. I'm glad that Samsung has a design that works and they're sticking with it. But here's my thing with the Ultra, okay? The Watch 7 Ultra. First off, the color choices are kind of different. The silver with the white accents, I thought that was the one that I would want to go with, but then when I saw that it was actually white on silver, that kind of turned me off. I'm like, eh, I don't really like that. So I'm still torn on if I'm going to go with the titanium gray or the titanium silver, as they call it, even though it's like not fully silver. I don't really know, but I'm going to touch on the elephant in the room. Did Samsung copy Apple? Yes. Apple has also copied Samsung. But what I, pros and cons, right? Pros and cons. What I like about what Samsung did was that they took the Ultra and they made it their own. So it has the squircle body, which is very similar to a Galaxy Watch of, uh, of of old. I cannot remember which one. I think it was the Gear 4 or something like that. They have a, It's very reminiscent of that design with the squircle. You still get the circular display, which I think looks really nice. And you get extra buttons, just like on the Apple Watch. Like you get the crown, you get the two buttons on the side, and the orange accents. I can do without the orange accents. I kind of wish they would have just made it like black and silver, like they did with the Watch 6 or black and titanium like they did with the Watch 5. The Watch 5 Pro, I should say. Like, I would have loved to have seen that. And that leads me to a con that I have, which I hope turns into a pro. But I really hope Samsung takes this design and runs with it. Because, my God, I'm tired of Samsung basically kind of like flipping every year. Like, we had the Watch 5 Pro, then we got the Watch 6, and then now we got the Watch 7 Ultra, which is nothing like the watch 5 pro so at some point i'd like to see consistency with the higher end watch you guys have this watch that people want to buy people are dedicated to why not why not keep it the same you you, you see what i'm saying like that's just me personally like why not why not keep it the same subtle tweaks subtle things that make it different but don't completely change it every year because now people have to reinvest in things like anybody who had a watch 5 a watch 5 pro can't use those same bands with the Watch 7 Ultra. So it's kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of it's kind of a defeating thing. But I'm looking forward to getting my hands on it. I am gonna order one. I'm gonna order one because I'm going all in. I got the I got the watch, the Z Fold, and I'm curious to see how it's gonna go, especially with the battery life, that 590 million hour battery, the new three nanometer processor. I'm curious to see how it's gonna go when it comes to all of that. Now, lastly, lastly, let's talk about the buds. The Buds Pro 3 and the Buds 3. I don't like the stem design. One thing that I loved about Galaxy Buds, like I have this box here, the headphones are charging, but I got this box right here. One thing that I loved about these Buds is the way they fit in the ear with no stem. And I love that about the Buds Pro 2 as well. But with the new Buds and they have that stem and the LEDs on them as well, I'm not really sure how I'm gonna feel about those. I have a hard time keeping AirPods in my ears, so I'm hoping that this does not happen with the Buzz 3 Pro because those are the ones that I ordered, but we'll see. I like the overall design aspect and I like the case style and everything. I just have my, I have, I have my, you know, anxiousness about how it's actually going to perform in real world usage. But as it stands right now, I'm getting the Buzz 3 Pro the Watch 7 Ultra, and the Z Fold 6. I wanted to get the Ring, but unfortunately, the Ring is already, to last time I looked, it's already sold out in the black and silver. Only gold is available. So if I get one, I'm going black, and I'm just going to wait for that to come back in stock. So I'll probably get that at some point in the future. Maybe do an unboxing video on it. If you guys want to see that, drop a comment down below and let me know. But that's pretty much it. That's all we really got yesterday. New Buds, new watch, new Ring, brand new and new phones. We didn't really get much else. And then like I said, there's a whole bunch of Galaxy AI stuff. I'm not really too big on the AI stuff. Like a lot of the AI things involving like taking a photo and making something appear in the picture that wasn't there. Like I don't really do all of that. I like to preserve the moment or the memory of what I took a picture of. I don't want to add things that weren't there or take away things because that's just, to me, that's not what, a, what, what photography is. So when I use a smartphone to take a picture of something, I'm not thinking about what can be replaced or what kind of AI can change it. I'm thinking about capturing a moment as I see it. Now, some of the live translation, things like that, that's really cool, especially if you're somebody who travels abroad, 
uh, you know, or goes to different countries, obviously that would be really cool. So maybe one day I'll get to test something like that. Maybe I get to test it here, you know, in Jacksonville, Florida, who knows? But uh, until then, the Galaxy AI stuff is kind of still like, I'm still treading water with that. I'm not really too deep on that one just yet. But that's what we got yesterday, the Unpacked Event 2024. And of course, all of it, you know, Snapdragon powered. I think the biggest thing for me is just ready to see how the Galaxy AI affects the Z Fold 6 when it comes to the battery life with that Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. And also just to see how this new watch is, especially being on the Wear OS 5 platform with that new processor. I'm really hoping for good things. Big battery, we'll see. So hopefully in a few weeks when I get my hands on everything, plenty of videos, case videos, accessories. You guys know how we do things over here, okay? You guys know it's Tech King Max Galaxy, right? So <laughs> that might be, a, might be a good name for the channel. But anyway, let me know what you guys think about the Unpacked event. Drop a comment down below. Let's talk about it. And did you order anything? Are you pre-ordering anything? Did you order it yesterday? Did you order it today? Or are you pre-ordering anything at all? I'd love to know. Drop a comment down below. Let's talk about it. And until then, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.